Welcome back. Let's take a look at that problem that I left you with on temperature, example 2-2. Two, two. We were in this question trying to find a difference in temperature. And if you calculated that, you would find that the difference in temperature is minus 38, whether we're talking about degrees Celsius or Kelvins. It turns out that a delta doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what units we use. If I could show you what the conversions would look like, if we took that delta T, remember it's final, so if you had converted 255 to Celsius, we would get minus 18. Add your 273, and then minus your final, which was, or excuse me, your initial, which was 20 degrees Celsius, plus the conversion to Kelvin, you would see that your conversion to Kelvin cancels because 273 minus 273 gives you the zero and either way you calculate it you're going to get a minus 38 degrees celsius now bear in mind a pure temperature reading cannot be negative that negative doesn't mean we have a negative mass or kinetic energy because that's illogical it means that there was a decrease in the temperature very important to include that negative sign there so I want you to pay close attention to things like that. Now, take home lesson here is, as we build up in the year, if you see a formula with just temperature in it, you're likely going to be using Kelvin. If you see a formula with a delta T, we won't use that for quite a while, but when you do, you can use either degrees Celsius or Kelvin for that. Now, let's talk a little bit about Kelvin, some interesting things that Ms. Marusik was looking up recently. First off, you need to understand that concept of absolute zero. Uh, if I could write an objective verb for you, this would be at the definition level. You need to define absolute zero. So let's look at some of the key terms here. That's the point at which a perfect, pure, crystal exhibits perfect order. Effectively, all motion stops. And I really wouldn't have guessed this. If I'd had to guess, I would have thought we were maybe in the millionth or something of a Kelvin unit. But look at this. We are actually at 0 0.10, what we call nano Kelvins. So if you bring this over, you'd see a nano Kelvin is actually 10 to the minus 9th, just to give you a preview of the prefixes you're going to, to learn. That's pretty amazing. Now, she also found, I'm guessing on Wikipedia, but she also found that the coldest natural temperature that's ever been recorded is minus 89.2 degrees Celsius. And there's the Fahrenheit and the Kelvin conversions for that up in Antarctica. So just a unique little tidbit don't need to memorize that, you don't need to memorize that, but you definitely need to know what absolute zero is referencing. Now, when you look at numbers that are this small, you notice I automatically moved to what should be familiar to you as scientific notation. So let's take a look at scientific notation and how we're going to be using it in our class. My key focus is going to be teaching you to use this scientific notation on your calculator. You will at the pre-AP level always have a calculator available. When you have that opportunity to take AP chemistry, there is a component without a calculator and I'll teach you more of this type of mathematics then. But what our goal is, is some way to talk about that alternate way of writing numbers that are either very, very large or very, very small. Atoms are very, very small. I don't know, hopefully you remember that amount that I talked about, the mole. We're going to learn that it would be six, three, and then we're gonna put like 22 zeros after it. Okay, I don't want to sit there and write 22 zeros. That's silly. We need a better way to write numbers like that. And as a general guideline, I don't, you know, take off points for this. But if the exponent 
that number that's the power of 10 would be more positive than a plus 2 or more negative than a negative 2, then we're going to use scientific notation. If it's between, I wouldn't bother because the idea of scientific notation is to use something that's convenient. And it's to me a lot easier to write the number 0.02 than to write 2 times 10 to the minus 2. So it's really about a convenient way for writing numbers. Now, in addition, we are going to find that there's something very significant that's easier to do with scientific notation. Now, just a point of reference, don't use scientific notation when we're dealing with money. Money's a count, and we really don't use scientific notation with it. And we're not going to use it with temperature for the most part. You know, again, that's probably not something I'm going to take points off for, but we really want to work on uh, improving our skills on things like that. Now, a good portion of this is going to be done in the classroom, but let me give you a quick review so you're ready to jump right in in the classroom. I've already used some of these terms in scientific notation. The number in front of the multiplication sign is called the coefficient. So you need to be familiar with that term. We'll use it in a couple of contexts, and in general it means the number in front of if we could just simplify it. Now, this number that's in the power of 10 is called the exponent. So we're, that number is very important because that exponent is going to give you an idea of what keystroke we're going to use on our calculators. And it's typically going to be listed as an EE key or an EXP key. And again, we'll, we'll look at that in more detail in class so I know for sure you can find it. Now for chemistry, engineering scientific notation is different. We're not going to deal with engineering. But for chemistry, the coefficient has to be a number equal to 1 or less than 10. Can't be equal to 10. It's got to be less than. So if we want to write that mathematically, it can be greater than or equal to 1. So it can be equal to 1. And then we'd have our coefficient, but it has to be less than 10. Not less than or equal to, but less than 10. Okay. Now, if we're talking about numbers greater than 1, so if our number, original number is greater than 1, then our exponent is going to be a positive value. If we have fractions between 0, there's our number, and 1, then we're going to see that our exponent is going to be a negative number. And again, I'm hoping this is a bit of a review for you. Now, one more concept, and then we'll work on calculators in class. If you have to estimate, which is very valuable, you can all often move very quickly when you estimate, converting from scientific to decimal. If the exponent is a positive value, you want to move the decimal to the right. If the exponent is a negative value, then you want to move your decimal point to the left in going back to decimal form. Again, I'm going to teach you how to let our calculator do that. If we're adding and subtracting, adding or subtracting, we have to adjust the value so that the exponents are the same. In other words, we're not going to have necessarily correct scientific notation at that point, but we have to have the exponent the same or we can't do the addition or subtraction. If, on the other hand, we're dealing with multiplication, what we're going to do is multiply the coefficients and add the exponents. For division, we divide the coefficients and subtract the exponents. Now this is handy to know. It is likely that when you learn this in math, they're not going to let you use your calculators. But in our class, we're using calculators. And I'm going to teach you how to use our Inspire calculator when you are in class the next time I see you. So. Take a break. We're going to go on in the next videos to some of the more mathematical processes, learning that critical thinking that we're going to be using in the mathematics of chemistry.